Hello everyone, and welcome back to the jungles of the Fruitlees tribe, where our priestess of the Moon Mother Goddess has just welcomed her first attempt to bring the Moon Mother Goddess's will into being, her very first child, Ray, whose name is just freaking adorable, uh, but who is unfortunately not the albino nicheling we were seeking nor does she carry that trait and she's also heat bodied so she is going to be really overheated her whole life i think she's just going to end up living in the streams in order to endure it and she has short-sighted eyes so this poor child was not a collection of blessings from the moon mother goddess whatsoever hopefully the next one will be we will still give little one this little one a future i'm going to name her nene uh, Nay Nay Ray, because I think that name is kind of amazing. But we do need to work on um, on trying to get some more food, so that's kind of an issue. And speaking of food, it did occur to me. Uh, well, uh, we need food before we can have more babies with the uh, wonderful Coco, who is the moon mother bat's lore leader, her priestess right now. So that is going to be quite important. But it occurred to me. To get more food, it might be good for Persimmon, Coco's sister, who is now expecting a child with a ginger, to perhaps, instead of nesting over by where Pome, very pregnant Pome, an elder, now on her last day of life and her last baby, I am going to miss her so much, and I know that it's going to be quite the blow to Wakame. He doesn't expect to lose his meat so soon, but I'm afraid it's going to happen any minute now. Oh, that's so sad. That is just so sad. Uh, poor, poor, cowardly, in a good way, frightened Pome. I don't mean cowardly in a bad way, but I'd be scared too. I mean, she got abandoned by the rest of the, the bat tribe, or the bat colony, when the tsunami and the earthquake and all of the disasters hit because both her wings were broken, and they never healed, and she's had to deal with a lot in her life. And I think, even though she's still easily frightened, She's glad that she has had many children with the love of her life, Wakame, and she's very quiet, even though she has screamed quite a bit in bat screeches whenever the Berina have shown up, whenever she's been afraid in the past. I think she has been very quiet about the fact that she knows it is her final days, but she is glad to leave behind her children. Oh, goodness. If you guys aren't here for the roleplay, I don't know why you're here. But anyway, instead of nesting near very pregnant Pome, I think Persimmon wants to nest under the uh, the nut tree because we are struggling once again with food and she knows where to go to solve that and also where to go where she can stay a little cooler because she does have toxic body. So she's going to start wiggling her way this way. <gasps> Bottles! Ginger, get over here and help! Oh my gosh, and there's just food galore. I think they would call Tagime over to help with the whole bundle thing, and now there's fish over here. Oh my gosh. And Wakame, he's a little short-sighted, so it's taking him a second to catch up, but there you are, dear. And then we're going to have Palme gather up some food. Gooseberry is now inheriting her new stinky fruit tree. Uh, we'll have Star jump down and wait because he should be able to start gathering up things soon too. I already knew that that was a safe plant or else I wouldn't have moved him there by the way. So Star is down there. We've got Rosanna Anna gathering up some termites. We've got Mulberry gathering up some food here. The Nishlings feast whenever the lullaby of um, the lullaby of the moon mother bat comes after all. We've got little Mevi following along as she learns where to get food with Kiwi who is very intent on a nest that she knows of over here, and also all of the delicious berries that she knows of over here. There we go. And Artichoke can gather up quite a bit of food as well. Oh, thank goodness. I was really spooked about the food situation, but we seem to be handling it. I think Lurzu is kind of like in self-imposed exile right now. I don't really know why. Maybe he's a little bitter over not being a bat. That, maybe that's the truth. Uh, and I'm gonna let Radish Little baby Ray Rose is all grown up. I'm gonna let Radish jump over here. I'm gonna let Clem gather a couple pieces of food. And I'm gonna let Radish jump over here because Clem, Clem, and, and, and they they had a bit of a rough time in a way because they did have their bond challenged when it turns out Radish was summoned by the moon mother bat to give children to the moon priestess. 
not ideal. It does have to do with the fact that he's the only male currently carrying albinism, and we really, really, really want to get some albino nichelings going. But he will reassure Klim that she is still the true love of his life. And apparently, she has no problem believing that. How oh, sweet. Meanwhile, we do have Karnu, who is basically looking for any unaffiliated female that smells good to him, which is Rose Anna Anna. So he's trying to wiggle his way over there, and I think he might, oh, he's short-sighted. This is gonna take forever. He's trying to get there. Until then, he's just kind of wasting our food. Um, and then finally, not to, ruin the whole bond between Clem that was just restored. But Coco will come. She will, without saying a word, apologize, sweep her wings out. And, oh dear. Apparently, Radish is a little bit irritated about the fact that he must once again, right here in his very nest, in his very home, be summoned forth again. Poor Clem, hang in there, guys. We just need a, we need a albino baby. And then finally, let us, on this this lullaby day of the Moon Mother Goddess, say goodbye to Pome, as Wakame has been able to work his way back over to the love of his life, and say goodbye to his mate, just as she hopefully gives birth to their final child. Please give birth to the final child. Oh, thank goodness! Oh my gosh! Water chestnut! What the heck? Pome! I am naming this this daughter of yours. Why did you only have females? Who knows? Pomegranate. Pomegranate. Welcome, little pomegranate, to the tribe. A scorpion-tailed, toxic feigned nicheling who I think can offer a toxic promise. She does have toxic ability with her scorpion tail and with her fangs. So we'll say even though she's not toxic bodied, she can offer a toxic promise to bring wanderers into the tribe. She can gather, so she'll be given a berry bush in the future um, as a forest wanderer. I, I am gonna miss Pome so much. I think that Wakame would be a little, a, a little shocked to have lost his mate. He will gather up food to bring the children. There we go. Little Bear will come over to kind of see what her father is, is up to, what he is doing. But holy cow! We have another set of toxic things in the tribe! You guys, that is so cool! Pomegranate! You are a descendant of the bat line, you get a wing, and I'm also going to go ahead and give her better fertility! Because right, I need to get that fertility up in my tribe. That could spread and be a problem. The low fertility is already proving to be more challenging than I thought it would. Speaking of fertility, oop, actually, speaking of lunch, ha ah, Good job, Ginger! Oh man, there's another bun- <laughs> Oh my gosh. Alright, Persimmon's just like ready to get comfy over here. Settle on in. Ginger's ready to eat. We're ready- Oh, 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 there's a bundle! Takibe! Get it! Oh, she got a mole instead! Man, she's a good huntress, actually. She can see quite far. Uh, alright. But speaking of fertility issues, Koga will apologize, but insist it is the will of the Moon Mother Bat. And I think that- ooh! Uh, ooh! I, I wonder if Radish is like, leave us be until my- until my mate is able to have her child. I cannot leave until- Oh my gosh! Radish, I wonder if he's like, listen, at least, like, my mate does not need to be involved in this. I wonder if Clem will be like, darling, it is better that I, I, I know what is going on. This is for the sake of the moon mother bat. <sighs> nope. Oh my gosh. I wonder if Coco, le, Coco's like, I will give you some space. I wonder if they, they, they need to leave the, the realm of the nest in order for everyone to feel comfortable enough. Meanwhile, Karnu, you go ahead and eat up, buddy, because I need some food and it's a shortcut to wiggling your way towards my, the female up here. And Rosanna Anna, I think, has been tasked with kind of like babysitting. Um, and Mulberry is tasked with kind of like taking care of the mulberry bushes, so I think she's trying to defend the spot. And Razorina, or Razorina, <laughs> Rosanna Anna, Razorina would be a cool name for like a warrior nicheling is in charge of making sure that the baby is taken care of and the termite mounds and that it'll be easy for Coco to be able to jump back up. So if I move over here to get that bundle, then we move outside of the range that that 
Coco can see. So, hmm. Gonna have to be careful there. Alright, we want to clear that spot out. Butternut is not yet old enough to help, but she can watch the little river. Star can do a little digging and a little clearing of grass. Okay. Rosanna Anna. I think she wants to destroy the termite mount. We'll have her come down and like work on the termite mount at least. There are a lot more bundles on this island than I remember. We're gonna have to do something about that. And Kiwi, I think she's about ready to give birth, but she was really hungry. There you go. And Artichoke is teaching little Mevi how to gather the different plants of the forest. And we'll have him jump down. Yeah, and just start clearing the way. He's teaching little Mevi the way of the forest gatherer. And meanwhile, I think that Lurzu wouldn't travel too far. I think that he would just see it as his responsibility to take care of the uh, the invasive plants. I, I feel like he's a little bitter. He had the offer of love, but I think that there is a, a, a slight hurt, some mysterious past that he has as a wandering orphan when he was invited to the tribe. I wonder if I wonder if he's just never truly felt like part of the Fruitleaf tribe. And so that's why he refused to leave his lineage within it. And I wonder if as he ages, he's only been able to dream and to think about the place that he came from, the tribe that he was part of. And he cannot bring himself to become part of this tribe. So he takes he takes risky action clearing out these dangerous dangerous plants all on his own. Mm, Larzu. Hmm, I see. All right. Ray Rose, you're the only one who hasn't moved, so that means it is time to carry on. Was somebody pregnant on a nest? Yes, but I don't think Clem will give birth today. Okay, so. Lurzu? Yep, I think that he on his own will be clearing away these dangerous invasive plants. Uh, the blessings of the rain have stopped, unfortunately. Uh, Mulberry is going to protect her little berry bush. Ah, get out of the river, I said. I think she slipped. <laughs> she slipped and landed on a razorina, it seems. Uh, let's see. Anybody else, like, in critical condition of anything? No. Okay. So we're gonna actually have Squashy jump up? What do I want to do here? Rosanna Anna can attack and eat the termites. Let's see if Coco... Coco will apologize once more. The will of the moon, mother goddess. All right, and that has finally been taken serious. So Squashy, you jump up here to make it so Coco can straight jump. There we go. Coco can jump straight over. Can she gather any kind of food? She can actually get bunnels. <gasps> she can fly and get the bunnel prey. That was the coolest thing ever. I think Rosanna's beak just fell open and she was like, oh my gosh. She just gained so much new respect for how amazing the lore line and the Moon Mother Bat line is. Wow, that was actually danger. She was so excited. She got danger, danger, danger. Oh no, Squashy, you're pregnant, what? Um, I might let Squashy go ahead and get comfy on the nest. I don't think, I didn't realize that, unfortunately, this was danger plant. Uh, so I think Rosanna will kind of be like, ouch, and like roll down, and we'll have Gooseberry help her out. Uh, Gooseberry is her half sibling, after all. Uh, and Gooseberry is also in charge of this tree. And Wakame will come over, and he will clear away these grasses to watch over his children. He will be so grateful that at least Pomegranate is here to remember her mother forevermore. And then Tagimi, we're gonna have her. She's really good at what she does. There's a, she's gonna help me with my bundle problem. So Tagimi is gonna come over and start helping me take out some bundles. Cause there is quite a few of them. Get out of here, bundles. <gasps> a tree trunk! Oh my gosh. We can start calling for mates. We can start calling for bait. We can start rescuing orphans. This changes everything. Rosanna Anna, I will allow you to call out at it. Uh, Rosanna Anna, you are descended from Palm as well. Why do you not have the wing? There you go. But I will allow you to call at it, Rosanna Anna, because you very well might actually end up unlocking Peacock Tail. This is so awesome. Oh, and a tree trunk seems very fitting for the nicheling who has been dedicated to clearing out termites to uh, hang out at, if you ask me. 
All right, and also Kiwi is like ready to pop. So we're gonna get her comfy on the nest. She's also going to stare, kind of look at her. Can you imagine Kiwi's expression of like looking, getting comfy in the nest with her big pregnant belly, settling in like, ah, getting ready to have her baby and then glancing down and being like, what are you doing? With Mulberry having slipped into the river and just like sitting there blurp, like just blowing bubbles and trying to catch a razorina lazily. Oh my gosh. Yes, and Mevi has actually gone ahead and she has grown up. She is uh, old enough to start helping with gathering food. And I think we might even send Mevi and some of the others over to the swamp to see. I don't think we're going to get lucky enough. But if there's like one toxic berry bush over here, we could permanently unlock a toxic body for our tribe, which would be really cool. So Mevi might eventually make it her job to kind of wander towards a place that just her nose seems to guide her to, that little tiny, tiny patch of swamp. So, but until then, she's going to help out with uh, just taking care of things as her adoptive father Artichoke has been diligently trying to be a good forest wanderer. Uh, and then over here, Lurzu is taking care of Star. I'm going to have you scooch over and you're going to clear some things away. Little Butternut will play down by your side. Clem is comfy and cozy. She understands, even though Radish is quite distressed, that they once again had to have their romance interrupted by Goddess. Not his ideal. But I, I do feel that Clem understands, and she might hopefully be soon ready to give birth. And Cardu is going to stuff himself silly. Uh, it's a little hard to reach any females that smell good. <gasps> Durian! You snuck in, little guy? Hi! Oh my gosh, I love Toxic Body. They just make the coolest looking babies. He's like a little cheese pizza. He has albinism! He has or albinism recessive, another male with albinism recessive, F and A immunity. Does he smell good to Coco? No! He does not smell good to Coco. Uh, Coco might, if she doesn't end up having a double winged baby, she might end up having to choose somebody to inherit her lore line. And I think, what if it's Durian actually? I think she might choose Durian because he has been born. He is the child of Persimmon, her sister, after all. And he has been born with the bright purple eyes that are the colors of the fruits of the jungle. Also berries, mostly, but you know what I mean. So I, I think Durian might be the next lore leader if we don't have a double winged bat. So we have to be very careful. We got to give him bat wing for one because he is a direct descendant of the main lines. But... We're gonna have to, we might have to give him double bat wing because he might be chosen as a lore leader and he might be given the double bat wing as a gift of that line. So, oh, that's gonna be so interesting. Meanwhile, Persimmon is hungry as she can be. Uh, and there is some food over here if you can hunt it, Ginger. Got it. All right, she's gonna kick the tree for the first time in a generation. Ah, this is wonderful, guys. We've got this. We've got this. Everybody comfy? Everybody comfy? Okay. We're doing it! Oh, this is so exciting. But alright, my friends. Oh my gosh, watching Coco fly down from the sky was one of the coolest things ever. We've got tons of babies coming up. We've got... I really... Look at Durian. Look at him hugging the little nut. Ah! I love him so much. He's so cute. Oh, he's one of my new favorites. We're doing it, guys. We are finally starting to take over the jungle. We have found a tree trunk to start calling at for bait to feed to the to danger plants um, or maybe for new mates. We have a little Mevi who is going to possibly unlock toxic body for us if she can find any toxic berry bushes. We've got another baby on the way with Coco. Things are gonna be interesting. So, all right, guys, I will see you all next time. Do please leave a like to toss some delicious fruits to this fantastic bat colony. And if you would like to become part of our nicheling pantheon, do please consider subscribing. And thank you all so much for sharing your time with me. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.